Hi, I'm Bert Nussbaumer from macrobeat.co.uk. We really had a busy week in uh, FX and equities, but more so in terms of fast ranges and really any break either side of the market. The story really belongs to the bond market where we see, saw a continuation on the move lower in US bonds, 10-year uh, uh, yields hitting a new high at 133.30, which definitely is uh, the fact that we do indeed start to talk inflation. The central banks may try to downplay it, but if you look across all the commodity markets, if we talk about, look at some of the data, particularly in the US, if we start to think about the potential of another 1.9 trillion stimulus coming in the US. So really, from all angles, we start to really see that large pickup and we continue to talk a rather uh, a strong grow sort of 20 style uh, uh, out there in Q2 and Q3 when people really are out of lockdown and, and can actually start spending money. Realities, the central bank, as I said, will probably downplay that uptick in inflation. I don't really agree that the market will sort of agree or ignore these kind of talks. So I would think that bond markets remain under pressure. It's a worse start for the bond market since 2013. So quite clearly that is a story to watch. There was another story this week out, the Fed staff report. Uh, the, the Fed staff did definitely start to worry more about equity levels, more about you know the cheap money in the system. But obviously Mr. Powell sort of decided to uh, ignore that sort of warning and continues to point, paint a picture of uh, you know, a dovish picture, so to speak. Reality is, as we have talked in this forum before, I think the Fed is done. They know it, we know it. So all there is left to do is this sort of forward guiding dovish talk, which the market probably may not really believe in. Uh, but here I go with the first slide, really, on the 10-year yields. Uh, this was taken a little bit early, so we've gone a little bit above that sort of uh, uh, March highs of last year. We probably just hang about now at this sort of red line, so clear uh, move high in US yields. I don't think this is going to change. I think the overall direction is for higher yields in, in the months to come, as the story, as we said, is quite clear. It's inflationary pressure from all sides. The next slide, this is the data surprise index. We had stunning US retail sales this week. We had channel solid data, except maybe the uh, uh, payroll data that are still lacking a little bit. But in general, I mean, this is just a very solid picture. It probably continues to fuel the idea of maybe the Fed is slightly on the wrong track uh, right now. On the next slide, this is just one slide, which is the New York Empire pay prices versus PCE. I could show you about 15 similar charts where com inflation components on, on other uh, uh, data just paint a very clear picture of a pickup on inflation. Last uh, week's CPI was obviously benign, but I think it really is hiding the truth. So uh, be, be aware, I think the next prints in CPI are gonna start to really show uh, at least headline inflation showing up strongly, I would think. Uh, in FX, as I said, rather very boring. We had a serious test of that 119.45 feeble support, uh, which really separates us from this just being a correction or being a sort of downtrend. Uh, uh, given that we hold the area for now, means like we're still consolidating, going sideways. I just wonder how long the dollar can really ignore US seals and how long it can actually ignore the very strong uh, data in the US, which is probably only going to get stronger in Q2 and Q3 of 2021. So I'm still very upbeat for the dollar. Uh, Q1 is going to be tricky. The market is bearish dollar. Uh, so that bearish dollar mantra is probably very hard to overcome. But as long as we don't really break any key levels, I guess the dollar shorts feel pretty safe right now. But I think later in Q1 into Q2, I think we're really starting to challenge dollar shorts. And I wouldn't be surprised if a solid move up in the dollar, which is probably a bit against consensus, but at least that's my view anyway. Last but not least, gold. It's the first time I started to get involved myself again in gold, 1763 and a half, a very big sort of uh, pivot here. Given that we finally start to talk inflation, it's very surprising to see that gold struggles as much as it does. But this is really the last roll of the dice in gold. Uh, if that doesn't hold, then I think gold is really the old economy. And uh, that's it for me this week. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye.